Hey, ABC 10 meteorologist Brendan Minchef. Uh, he, we are talking about El Nino and La Nina. Now, this is something that we talk a lot about when we're doing our seasonal forecasting, uh, and particularly when we're, you know, late summer into the fall, kind of looking ahead to the wintertime and asking ourselves, is it going to be a wetter winter or a drier winter? But instead of doing a seasonal forecast on El Nino and La Nina, let's talk about exactly what those are and the differences between the two and also some common misconceptions. So first, I'm going to start with a map here. And this area of the equatorial Pacific is called the Nino 3.4. Uh, and this is the area that we look at most to determine whether the conditions that we are in is currently neutral La Nina or El Nino. So there's three phases here. I just listed them. Neutral phase means uh, there's a less than 0.5 degrees Celsius change in the average sea surface temperature. So again, it's about average where it should be. It's neutral. That one's pretty basic. La Nina means it's cooler than average. It's about half a degree Celsius or more below the average sea surface temperature. Again, all in this Nino 3.4 region. And then the opposite of La Nina is El Nino, meaning it's half a degree Celsius or warmer uh, than the average sea surface temperature in that area. And each of these controls how the weather uh, is across much of uh, North America, South America, but it's not a direct connection. It definitely sets up patterns but it doesn't directly uh, affect if it's going to rain or snow. There's some other things at play, and we'll talk about that uh, as well in just a minute. But first, let's break it down a little bit more. It, generally speaking, this particular pattern, right, El Nino or La Nina, is called the El Nino Southern Oscillation, or INSO. Uh, so in inso neutral conditions, we've got some trade winds. Uh, and honestly, the setup is kind of what you'd expect. It's very moderate, right? We've got some cooler water upwelling off the coast uh, of South America, but the trade winds and the currents aren't quite strong enough to push that cooler water out across the equatorial Pacific. The warmest water is out in Oceania, uh, out in the uh, Western uh, Pacific. Now, uh, now we're going to talk about the kind of flip-flops, right? So El Nino and La Nina. Starting with El Nino, we've got weaker trade winds. So we've got weaker currents. And in fact, the currents even start to push backwards a little bit and direct some of that water out across, some of that warmer water, out across the equatorial Pacific all the way uh, to the coast of South America. This does have an impact on the type of weather that we see, generally speaking, in North America when we have El Nino conditions. Under El Nino, basically from Sacramento to the south is typically uh, a wetter than average period during El Nino, especially uh, and particularly during the wintertime. But it's not just California. We also see wetter than average conditions uh, across much of the southern United States. And this is a textbook example, but uh, it, this is important for our understanding here. It is also typically a warmer winter for the northern part of the United States. That's because the polar jet is further to the north during uh, an El Nino setup. Let's zoom back out again. We're going to talk about the opposite of El Nino, and that is, of course, La Nina. So what happens during La Nina? Well, we've got stronger trade winds, which pushes this cooler water that upwells off the coast of South America, and it pushes it further out across the equatorial Pacific. This also has an impact on what we typically see here in North America. Again, a textbook example, but it helps us to understand the differences. Remember, uh, in El Nino, Southern California is typically wetter than average, but in La Nina, it's not. It's actually typically drier than average. And basically, Sacramento to the north it averages a wetter, uh, wetter winter that continues into the Pacific Northwest. Across the uh, southwest, across the southeast, we typically see a drier than average winter, also warmer than average. But notice how the polar jet is a little bit further to the south. That means we're bringing cooler air, and in fact, in the wintertime, colder air, down from Canada and the Arctic into the upper Great Plains and parts of the Midwest. So it's colder, and for parts of the Great Lakes, typically a little wetter as well. So key differences between La Nina and El Nino, and especially so here in California, because we are closer to the coast, we're kind of the first ones uh, to get any systems approaching from 
the Pacific. So it definitely has quite a role here in California. But again, I want to reiterate, uh, it doesn't directly uh, correlate to whether we have a wetter or drier winter. Uh, here's a map of all El Nino events uh, from uh, 1991 to 2020. That's our average, but all El Nino events uh, from the 20th and 21st century. So in the Sacramento Valley, we're seeing about 106% of average precipitation, 108% uh, out in the Bay Area and down in Southern California. Uh, it, during an El Nino, 127% of average down along the Southern California coast, even into the desert southwest, uh, we see that, uh, or the desert southeast in this case of California, seeing 122% of average precipitation and 126% of average precipitation during all El Nino events. So statewide, that equates to about 109% of average. But these come in different flavors as well. A weak uh, El Nino is where the, uh, the degrees Celsius, uh, the departure from average, right, is just a little more than half a degree Celsius. Whereas once we start talking about moderate and strong El Ninos, the strong El Ninos, 1.5 degrees Celsius or warmer uh, above that average mark. So what we would think kind of naturally is the stronger the El Nino, maybe the wetter the year. Not always the case, but as we see, we've had three very strong El Nino years, and that was, uh, at least when you take the average of the case, very strong El Ninos typically give us a lot more uh, precipitation in the wintertime, a lot more rain in the valley, a lot more snow in the high country than we would in, say, a weak El Nino. But 2015-16 was, in fact, a relatively dry winter across uh, California, not just Northern California, but the entirety of the state. Let's talk La Nina, though. We'll come back to that idea. Well, let's talk a little bit of La Nina. Uh, we average about 97% of average during La Nina. Weak La Nina is 101% of average, but moderate La Ninas are actually typically the driest of all here in California, where we average just 90% of uh, precipitation in California. And we can look at this uh, by region as well. Remember, 90% uh, during moderate years, but during all La Nina years, it's 97%. Look at the numbers here. Uh, basically, the entire state during a La Nina event sees below average precipitation. That correlates with the number that we see back there. This is where we get the idea that El Nino years are wetter than average and uh, La Nina years are drier than average. But there's been some notable uh, weak La Nina winters that have actually been pretty wet. 2016-17 is 156% of average precipitation. That was the most recent or the second most recent drought busting year uh, in California, 22-23. The most recent drought busting year was also a weak La Nina. So those came in wetter than average. But then you look at 2017-18, just 76% of average in the Sacramento Valley. So definitely it can go back and forth. That's why I say it's not the controlling factor uh, as to whether or not uh, an El Nino year is a wet year or a La Nina year is a dry year. It definitely sets up the pattern, but there are exceptions. One of the things that has a much more direct impact on the type of weather we see here in California, especially is the Pacific North American pattern and its positive phase, high pressure sits off the coast that's a blocking high pressure, closes the storm door, we don't get any storms coming in. But during its negative phase, that high pressure is out in the Gulf of Alaska, so that storm door is wide open across the West Coast. Our weather pattern is typically wetter and cooler. But the Pacific North American pattern, or the PNA, is on a daily to weekly time scale, whereas the INSO, right, the El Nino Southern Oscillation, is on a scale of about 18 months. So the PNA changes rapidly, that why, that's why it has a much more direct impact on our weather, whereas El Nino and La Nina operates on a scale of about a year and a half. So it doesn't impact our weather directly. It just kind of influences the overall pattern. So very quickly, here's some common uh, INSO misconceptions. All El Ninos and all La Ninas are the same. That's incorrect. No two events are the same. There are odd years, for instance, years where we have uh, El Nino conditions, but it's dry, or years where it's a La Nina setup, but it is wetter than average. El Nino always means wetter, kind of as we talked about. That's generally true, but not always. Example, that very strong El Nino of 2015-16 was a below average year. And El Nino years don't always mean flooding, just kind of throwing that in there. Uh, oftentimes when we think about like an arc storm scenario or uh, massive flood events, we think about it being during El Nino, not always true. And then lastly, INSO changes, California coastal temps, no El Nino La Nina is only in the equatorial Pacific and the coastal temperatures are determined by other factors.